second reading comes to us today from the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you're reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life was taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does this prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Well, lately it seems as though bad news is pouring in from all over the world. After an earthquake in Nepal last Saturday, the death toll has climbed to nearly 7,000. The injured list is more than 14,000. There are thousands who are still missing from their homes. 130,000 homes and buildings have been destroyed, and another 10,000 buildings have been demolished. Strong tremors continue in the region and hindering efforts to provide aid. People are scared and overwhelmed. There's no food or medical supplies. Even body bags for the dead are really hard to come by. Human trafficking and a ferry ship sinking off the coast of the Mediterranean has killed another 800 people, drawing attention to the millions of refugees worldwide who are at the mercy of networks of smugglers who profit from human misery. On Monday, the funeral of Freddie Gray, another young black man who died while in police custody, has sparked riots in Baltimore, which counter the peaceful protests that also are the natural result of long-simmering frustration over abuses inflicted by police on the black community. The aftermath of the deadly Ebola virus is still impacting lives as teachers and pastors struggle to feed and care for the orphans left behind by the victims who are considered to be unclean by their communities. ISIS continues to behead <coughs> innocent people. Rockets and missiles are still going back and forth between Israel and Palestine. And you know, sometimes this stuff just gets to be so darn overwhelming that the only thing left to do is to turn to scripture and try and locate God in the middle of all the mess. Yet, as I read through the text for today, I couldn't help but feel a bit dismayed as I tried to figure out how on earth does a story about a traveling Ethiopian eunuch help me find God in all of this crazy chaos? Some days 
it seems that the Bible is full of stories that don't really connect with anything in particular. And today's story is a great case in point. We don't know the guy's name, only that he was a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, and that he was in charge of her entire treasury. As he is traveling along in his carriage, he's reading about the suffering servant in Isaiah and trying unsuccessfully to ponder out its meaning. Well, right away, this story appears to be full of holes. I mean, how on earth did this unnamed eunuch manage to secure a copy of the book of Isaiah? It was a sacred text, not something that he might have picked up in a gift shop on his way out of town. Printed materials were very rare because they were printed by hand. The synagogues would have kept their copies under lock and key. Yet this guy just waltzes in and gets his own personal copy. And why would an Ethiopian eunuch be worshiping in Jerusalem in the first place if he didn't even understand the sacred text? And how is it that Philip is sent by the Spirit to arrive at the exact right moment to overhear the eunuch reading Isaiah's words and puzzling over their meaning. The whole story is a huge collision of holy coincidences occurring at precisely the right moment in order for it to even occur. A lot of things had to happen just so in order for this story to turn out the way that it did. A lot of divine fuss was made to get to just this one eunuch. And then we don't even know what happens to this eunuch, except that he went on his way rejoicing. So that leads me to believe that maybe this story isn't even really the point. Maybe the point of this story is to point to a much greater truth. And right in the middle of the text, my suspicions are confirmed where it says, Then Philip began to speak. And starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. Let's linger here for just a moment. This is a story about someone telling another story based on a third story contained within this story. Weird, huh? Yet the point is that Philip told him the good news of Jesus. And despite all of the holy coincidences, that's where this story gains some traction. This story points to a much bigger story, and it is that story that helps us as we try to be faithful during times of such chaos and uncertainty. As I muddled my way through all of the bad news this week, it occurred to me that there are two different types of bad news going on. There are the natural disasters, and then there are the unnatural tragedies that are triggered by humans behaving badly. Natural disasters come out of nowhere. They appear to be random. And while science can explain how, it really can't explain why. When a natural disaster occurs, there's no one to point the finger at. And maybe that's why these types of disasters almost always seem to coax healthy responses from us. When the disaster is natural, our empathy and our compassion rush to the surface. We know that what happened wasn't anyone's fault, and we are all reminded of how vulnerable we really are as human beings. Whenever there's a natural disaster, there's always an outpouring of the very best behavior that humans are capable of. But then there are the unnatural tragedies that are a result of human error and sin. These are the tragedies that people have caused either deliberately or through negligence. These are the tragedies that could have been avoided. And despite the mass destruction caused by the earthquake, most of the chaos being reported falls under the heading of unnatural tragedies that are brought on by self-interest, greed, 
lack of compassion and empathy, mistrust, thin skin, and an unwillingness to forgive. In Philip's encounter with the eunuch, bad behavior was the last thought on his mind. Contextually, he would not have wanted anything to do with this eunuch because he was a foreigner. His skin was a different color, and worst of all, he had been mutilated. But Philip was caught up in the spirit, and all he cared about was listening to the spirit and letting it guide him. This encounter had occurred after the Pentecost, and when the spirit told him to head for the road leading back to Ethiopia, he didn't ask why. He didn't even care why. He just got up and he went. When the spirit told him to go and talk to the eunuch, he didn't cringe and say, I can't talk to him. I mean, look at him. He's not to be trusted. That never even occurred to Philip. Philip was being guided by pure love. And when one truly lets go and gives it all up to the Spirit, we don't care if we're being asked to embrace an enemy or to clean out the loo. We're just thrilled to be included in such gracious and generous love. And that love spread. Very quickly it spread. The eunuch went on his way rolling in ecstasy. He went home, back to Ethiopia, a changed person. People back home would notice that, and they'd want to know why. And like Philip, he would have opened his mouth and told the story of Jesus. We have been given all of that and more right here in the church. We've been given the story of Jesus, the gospel, the good news. And we are guided by the Spirit when we allow ourselves to be. Haven't you ever experienced that little voice urging you to do something? Maybe to give someone a call or go see someone. And it was the exact right thing to do at the exact right moment. That is the voice of the Spirit. It's there all the time, guiding, nudging, urging us to do the right thing at the right time using us to do God's work. Usually we aren't very good at listening, and even when we do listen, sometimes we'll just ignore it. But when we tune in and go where we're led, powerful things happen. God things happen. Philip did what the Spirit led him to do, and he opened his mouth to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And as a result, That gospel, that good news, made it all the way here into this room. From that road leading back to Ethiopia, to Ethiopia, and all the way here to this time and this place. And what is this good news of Jesus Christ if not a message of how the kingdom of heaven is present and it is manifested through tolerance and forgiveness of each other? Jesus told us to love our enemies. He told us to forgive 70 times 7. He told us to turn the other cheek. He told us not to cling to earthly possessions. He advocated for a fair and just standard of behavior that ensured that everyone was included and that everyone was taken care of. And we know that. We know this gospel. It speaks to our hearts. And we know that it is right and that it is true or we wouldn't be here. But it doesn't do us much good. It doesn't manifest the kingdom of heaven unless we practice it and spread it. When humans are behaving badly anywhere, even in our own community, we are called upon by the Spirit to open our mouths and to remind each other that the kingdom of heaven is built and centered on love, compassion, kindness, grace, and forgiveness. Philip told the story of Jesus to the eunuch, and that relates to everything that goes on in the world because the story of Jesus is our truest and our finest story. It's the story of how we have been grafted into the story of God through Christ. We belong, we live, we move, and we have our being because we 
are all characters who have been written into the great plot of God's great story through the good news of Jesus. The scriptures, the psalms, the great hymns of our faith, the stories of our faith passed through the ages from mouth to mouth, generation to generation, theologian to theologian, the marvelous spiritual writings and stories of faithful saints carefully passed along to us over the centuries are all ways in which our story and the formless longings and hopes of our people are gathered up into the great story of a triune God who made us, redeems us, and calls us by the Holy Spirit to be the church. God is not absent in our human tragedy. God is in the tears of the survivors who reach out with hands to comfort one another. God is in the hearts linking us to those suffering around the world. And God is in the hands reaching out in love 